Okay, Steve, what are some of the things you can do with Photoshop? Uh, an illustrator designer has bought his new copy of Photoshop. What, what, what kind of power does that give? Sure. Um, well, first they could um, while away countless hours amusing themselves to no point whatsoever. No, <laughs> can't let. Uh, wait, I want, I want to try, make sure. I, okay, good. Yeah. Um, cancel that. Okay. No serious answers now. Yeah. No, I mean there's so many things somebody could do with Photoshop. You could actually create original art from the ground up. An artist could do that and okay. create the G clays, although there's a lot of debate as to whether that's valid or not in the fine art world. But at any rate, you can simply make art. You can get a Wacom tablet and, and draw and, and paint, you know. Paint with acrylic, watercolor, it's, oil. Well, it's not like water um, mediums. a Corel painter where it's like a brush engine. Okay. But so it's a different sort of experience when you drag a brush really fast. You'll see like a little stutter effect. Um, but you can, you know, with a Wacom tablet, you can actually act. You can draw. It's a different experience because you're not having that tactile feeling of paper and charcoal. It's, you don't hear the sound. You know, it's not the same. Okay. But you can do that. What you do with that becomes a gigantic question. Whether you're Outputting that as a print, or or you're just using it as for ideas, or posting those images on the web. Those are all things that are, you know, you can do. You can take photos that you've taken and bring them into a Photoshop file and mess with those with a brush. Hmm. Or you could simply take photos from some event, say a gallery opening or whatever, crop them, you know. Cut out your mother-in-law, whatever. Ex-girlfriend. Your ex-girlfriend be gone. <laughs> your ex-boyfriend be gone. Um, they were a little underexposed. You can bump them up. You know, they're a little undersaturated. You can pull up the saturation. You know, you could go very, very far with it. Can you take a traditional photograph and make it and, and scan it, and then make it uh, reduce the resolution on it so it becomes web friendly and sure yeah that would yeah say, say you have some photos from you know days gone by right mm. and they're they're printed out photos you could scan those and then m my sister did that she found all these archival photos in my mom and dad's trunk upstairs so she scanned them all at a fairly high res and in, in Photoshop she then brought the the uh, resolution down, and then she was able to distribute them to the people in the family. Can, can you take really? digital photos of your own artwork or your illustrations and then upload those Absolutely. photos and then play with them in Photoshop? Yeah. So, say uh, you make little sculptures. You know, you could set up some lights, have a little backdrop, take the pictures, open them up in Photoshop, crop them, um, even adjust the white balance if it's wrong. You know, if his photo's a little yellowy or a little blue, you know, um, keep an original version as high res as you can get, and then make, make another version that's a flattened JPEG that then you send out to Etsy or whoever you're working with. Yeah. On a more prosaic level, can yeah. you do things like design your own letterhead and, uh, Absolutely. and business yeah. cards? Yeah, and you can make a little business card, make a, what is it, two by three and a half inch file, 300 pixels per inch. Start typing your name and your email address. Take an image from a painting or a photo. Drag it into that file. And before you know it, you have a file that you could upload to Vistaprint or something like that. Can anybody do this? Anybody who has enough patience and time and they can get their hands on a copy of Photoshop can do this. You don't have to have a design background or you don't have to be no, super technical. No, but if you are a designer, it will be better designed. <laughs> and why, why do you say that? Why will it be better designed? Because Photoshop does a lot of thinking for you? No, or? Photoshop won't do the thinking. That's, that's why. Oh, okay. <laughs> because it won't do the thinking for you. If you um, use, uh, you know, maybe ill-considered fonts, you're going to get an ill-considered font. You know what I mean? If you're very what you careful, see is what you get. Right. If you if you're very careful about your spacing of your type, the size and the 
you know, tasteful presentation over images, that's what you're going to get. Yeah, so it is what you see is what you get. Exactly. You have so, to know a little bit about design. Well, it's, like I say, you know, the more design skills you have, the better design you're going to end up with having. That doesn't mean you need to be a graduate of an art program. Mm -hmm. It just means to be that you're the kind of person that thinks about that kind of thing mm -hmm. and cares about it. One of the things that I find with all that is it's a, it's a matter of engagement. If somebody is very involved in composing something, it's going to get more and more interesting because the more you work with something, whether it's digital or analog, the more you're going to start seeing relationships, the more you're going to start noticing things that you didn't see before. So it's going to become more and more um, informed, I would say. You know, it, you'll have a piece that looks like somebody spent time on it. I don't mean it looks labored, but it, uh, things are more well considered, I guess we put it that way. I'm almost getting a sense that you're saying that you can Photoshop can be a way to help you learn design. You know, it can in some ways. For example, the histogram in Photoshop, when you start working with the histogram and you're adjusting levels of images, for example. What let me just stop you and the histogram, histogram is a little looks like a little mountain range. Okay. And it's showing you the luminosity values in a photograph or any image. Ah. And uh, some cameras have them now. Okay. And when you look at that and you adjust something called the levels or the curves of an image, you'll see this thing start to bounce around. Mm -hmm. Or if you have a scan of a drawing, it'll be like a flat area because the scan is only of a drawing, let's say a pencil drawing, has only a limited amount of data. So you'll start, and then when you adjust the levels, which reshapes the histogram, you'll start seeing things in your image that you may not have seen before, and you might not have realized how flat as a sort of a term for an image that doesn't have a lot of dynamic range, uh -huh. you'll start finding out that it is flat, but before you didn't know it, you just saw the image. Uh -huh. Or you'll start finding out that it was very desaturated or underexposed. And before, you just saw the picture, but working with Photoshop... Gives you, you a whole lot more information yeah, about the picture. you look at an image right away and you go, oh, I could fix that with levels. But before, you just saw a picture and you didn't know you didn't know that there was more potential in that image than was actually being realized. So Photoshop will help you with that. Steve, what do you think is the best way to learn Photoshop for well, a student? Well, I often advise people to give a shot um, with lynda.com because it's $25 a month here. I'm not getting anything from this, by the way. So no, that's, you know, that's cancel right. Cancel that. No. Well, don't go there. <laughs> no, it's just such a great way to learn. Um, everybody learns in a different way. Some people that have a certain perseverant quality or they're somewhat of a sleuth can learn, mm. literally can learn this stuff just by Googling questions. Open up Photoshop, struggle, Google your questions, find the answers, uh. move forward. But that's sort of a painful process for most people. There's a lot of books. There's Classroom in a Book by Adobe. There's anything from Peach Pit Press. Like I said, lynda.com. Um, I think there's another site, Kelby, K-E-L-B-Y. They've got digital training too. So, um, or how about this? What about getting together with like-minded peers and starting a meetup group? You know, there's different ways to learn. Um, adult education classes in your area. All that adds up. Is Photoshop taking up a bit bigger part of the mind share of a lot of commercial art and, and art school programs and curriculums? I, as far as I know it does, I mean I keep on having Photoshop classes to teach you know in, in schools whether they're adult ed schools or actual you know proprietary schools and it seems to Every time going. you open a new Photoshop class it fills right up within, within, within just a couple of days. Yeah. yeah so I think people need it for everything. I read somewhere a couple of years ago that somebody thought that it was becoming like almost like a liberal arts type requirement. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that it literally is in a school, but it's becoming something that people just want to know to be educated. And I'm not necessarily mm -hmm. giving an opinion on that. No matter what profession they're in or, or right, discipline. Right, because, you know, it's nice in our world that's full of images and now video to be able to open up an image and crop it. You know, or to make a little um, 
you know, maybe representation of some concept as, a, you know, some sort of chart or something mm -hmm. that can be done in some program, maybe like PowerPoint, but Photoshop will give you a little bit more ability to articulate something in a little more, I guess, refined way. 